Hey folks, this is Kalani. As patch 8.3 gets closer and closer to a final picture on the public test realm, a lot of the systems and features have changed quite dramatically. The major endgame system that we'll all be taking part in over and over again is the horrific visions of Nazoth. A lot has changed with visions over the last few weeks, values have been tweaked, sources and rewards have been chopped and changed, but the current version should be a lot closer to what the horrific visions of Nazoth will play like when this all finally goes live. We have a better idea of how far you can get, what the new currencies are going to be used for, what the reward structure looks like, and how important these visions are going to be. Let's take a closer look. The horrific visions of Nazoth are going to be a major part of your endgame loop in patch 8.3. If you're not sure what I mean by that, basically you're going to be doing a lot of them, and you're going to want to do them a bit more than you're actually allowed to. To enter a horrific vision, you're going to need to finish the patch 8.3 introduction questline that takes you through a lot of the different parts of the patch, so you should have a good idea of what's going on by the time you actually get to a horrific vision. So you unlock them just by following the quests, pretty simple but you will also need a vessel of horrific visions to actually enter one. You can get these vessels from Black Empire Assaults and by trading your coalescing visions with Rathian. More on that later. The whole idea of a horrific vision is to get as much done as you can, with the time limit imposed on you with the sanity bar. Your sanity will continually drain while you're in a vision, and the deeper you delve, the faster it will drain. It's also worth noting that most of the elites and dangerous monsters in here do have nasty abilities that will decimate your sanity further if you're not careful. Dodging the bad stuff will be very important if you want to progress through the vision. There's a few reasons why you'd want to stay in a vision for a bit longer. First, every kill you get will yield some corrupted mementos when you exit the vision. That currency will be used to upgrade your titanic research and to put sockets on your gear later on. There's also multiple objectives in a vision, one main objective and four extras. The main objective is to kill Thrall in the Ogrimmar vision or to kill Illyria in the Stormwind vision. Completing that specific objective will end the vision regardless of how much sanity you have left and you'll be teleported to the chest room. The main objective chest will contain 125 corrupted mementos, a new essence, and quest items to upgrade your legendary cloak. But if you have plenty of sanity left, killing the main boss is kind of a waste of your vessel and your vision. You want to do as much as you possibly can before completing that main objective, whether that's trying to complete the other bonus objectives first, or just farming up a bunch of mobs for the mementos. You can only enter these horrific visions twice, maybe three times a week, so it's going to be important to squeeze every little bit of progress out of each one. The secondary objectives don't seem to change between visits to a vision, and they will reward their own chest at the end with 150 mementos and various other goodies. When you enter a new area for an objective, your sanity will drain significantly faster and some new annoying effects will try to hinder your progress. You can see what each area will change by hovering over the objective on the map, and you can actually check the map before you start the vision so you can plan everything beforehand. When you first start out, you'll have your cloak at rank 1, and then maybe a few unlocks in the archive. That's enough to get you one bonus objective and the main objective, if you're quick. More than that is going to take some serious rampaging through these visions, and you'll have to avoid everything that could reduce your sanity. I couldn't quite finish two objectives and the main one on my own with a rank 1 cloak, and I had to leave the second objective and rush back to the boss to try and kill it in time. It worked out, but only just. As you upgrade your cloak and unlock more in the archive, you'll be able to stay in longer and longer, and eventually you'll be able to do whatever you want. I do think visions will be more efficient with more people, you can have up to 5 in a vision at any given time, so that might be something to keep in mind. 5 players might be able to progress faster than just you on your own. Alright, so upgrading the cloak and unlocking stuff in the Titan Archive. How exactly does that work? Let's start with the Archive because it's actually super simple. The more horrific visions you do, and the more monsters you kill in horrific visions, the more corrupted mementos you're going to have. You can use these mementos to unlock perks or talents in the new Titan Archive console in the Chamber of the Heart. What I really like about this progression tree is that to start with, 
One side is more solo player focused, while the other side is more group play focused, so you can really zone in on how you want to play these visions. As you get further down, you start to get some crazy bonuses, like 200 sanity every time you kill an elite, and the very bottom trait is actually kind of stupid. When you pick that one up, providing you're constantly moving and killing and completing objectives, you might be able to stay in a horrific vision almost as long as you want. Time will tell, but that's the main use of your Corrupted Mementos currency. After you've unlocked everything in the Titan Archive, you can still find a use for mementos. Rathian will sell you an item that can create sockets on your gear for a very steep price of 25,000 mementos. It's expensive, sure, but at least your currency won't be going to waste after your Titan Archive is fully upgraded. The other progression path that you have is the Legendary Cloak. You get the first rank for free while completing the introduction experience, so you don't have to worry about a massive grind to actually get your hands on the cloak in the first place, but upgrading it is going to take a bit of time. You get a quest to obtain a compendium for Rathian, and that's where your first upgrade comes from. That compendium drops from the main objective chest of a horrific vision, so pretty easy to pick up, just complete a vision. Handing that in will give you your first cloak upgrade, and then after that you need to find pages of the compendium. They come from the same chest, so you just need to keep killing the main boss over and over, and you should get some cloak upgrades along the way. That doesn't mean go straight to the main boss every single time you do a horrific vision until you move on, just make sure you actually get to kill the main objective before you exit a vision. I did manage to pick up a page from Compendium Volume 2 as well, so at some point we're going to be moving on to that volume, and then maybe even a third. As long as you keep progressing through the horrific visions, you should be able to keep upgrading your cloak fairly easily. Now to do that, you're going to need some vessels of horrific visions, otherwise you won't be able to do any at all. You're going to get one of these through the introductory questline, and then you're kind of on your own for the rest. The easiest source of vessels is the Black Empire Assaults. Each week, either Uldum or the Vale of Eternal Blossoms will be under attack by Nazoth and his Black Empire. You can check which zone is under attack pretty easily on the map, and as an interesting side note, the zone which has the Black Empire Assault is also the zone where you'll find the raid entrance for Patch 8. Point three. So the raid entrance will actually move back and forth with the assault. The zone swaps every week and you get a world quest to fend off the assault once per week. When you hand in that world quest, you'll get a cache of the Black Empire, and within that cache is a vessel of horrific visions. So that's a guaranteed vessel once per week, as long as you take part in the assault. While the Black Empire assault is going on in one zone, the other zone will have an assault, it just won't be from Nazoth. In the Vale, you have assaults from the Mogu and the Mantid, and then in Uldum, you you have assaults from the Amethet. Those assaults do have a world quest tied to them, but they don't reward a vessel, sadly. They do, however, reward you with 200 coalescing visions. You might remember these, but they've changed a bit. You can take 1,000 coalescing visions to Rathian, and he'll trade you a vessel for them. That's a fixed price now. It doesn't increase or decrease or anything special, just a 1,000 coalescing visions price for each vessel. It's going to take you quite a while to gather up 1,000 coalescing visions, though you might be able to reliably get that done once per week. That would give you a second vessel to use every week. I think that's our limit right now, it kind of depends on how many coalescing visions you can farm. You can get them from the minor visions and the daily quest relating to them, and then you can enter the minor visions once per day. The more upgrades you have for your cloak, the longer you can stay in those minor visions, but it gets kind of boring. There are a bunch of daily quests available from the two new factions, one in all and one in the Vale, so knocking those out every day should yield you quite a few as well. The rares and events that spawn around the Assault Zones also reward some coalescing visions, and you can find some chests lying around that will contain a few too. So it just kind of depends how much time you have really, and how much effort you're willing to put into farming this stuff. You might be able to endlessly farm the minor visions, in which case you can do as many horrific visions as you want. The only factor left to consider is time. I've been able to stay in minor visions for 30 minutes and longer without getting close to running out of sanity, if I play things right. I just got bored, so I left. The same thing goes with farming dailies every day, and then when that's done, moving on to farming the rares, and then when that's done, moving on to farming chests. Patch 8.3 will definitely give you plenty of reasons to play, I just don't guarantee it's going to be the fun kind of play. So two vessels per week seems kind of easy, more than that will require a lot of grinding. 
So that's the what and the how of this whole system, but what about the why? Why should you want to run these horrific visions repeatedly, and why grind out the coalescing visions for another chance per week? Well, as I said, the horrific visions are your main source of two key progression materials. The first is Corrupted Mementos. You'll need those to unlock more traits in the Titan Archive, and then the other is for upgrades of your Legendary. That cloak will be your best in slot no matter what, and upgrading it will increase its item level and thus its power. More stats means more DPS for you, which is always a nice thing, but upgrading the cloak also provides you with corruption resistance. If you want to equip corrupted gear and benefit from some of those crazy effects, you're going to need a lot of corruption resistance. The cloak is one of the only two ways that we know of right now to actually get resistance so upgrading it will always be a priority. Horrific Visions are the most important part of the gameplay loop in 8.3 for this reason. There is also a new essence for each role that comes from Horrific Visions exclusively. Rank 1, Rank 2, and Rank 3 all come from the chest to the end of Horrific Visions, so if those essences are going to be good for you, this is the only way to get them and upgrade them. But besides progression, they're also really fun. Being able to do this solo or with a small tight-knit group of friends is going to be super cool for a lot of different people. You can upgrade your Titan Archive to suit your needs, you can create a battle plan by looking at the map before going in, and then you can try your absolute best to get as far as you can before you go insane. Every time you go into a horrific vision, you should be able to get just a little bit further. As you learn and progress and upgrade, you'll go from only being able to take down the main objective to clearing the entire board and having time to spare. I think it's going to draw a lot of people in and keep them entertained, because you can progress at your own pace, it can be solo play, and you can play how you want to. But horrific visions don't just stop when you're able to complete all five objectives. There are also hidden masks, which add another layer to the whole cake. We don't know where any of them come from yet. They're a little secret at the moment. We only have cryptic clues. When you get these masks, you can use them to make the vision significantly harder, but yield better rewards. So there's still progress to be had, but you're going to have to explore everything a horrific vision has to offer before you can go that deep. And that's how horrific visions are looking right now in the public test realm, and and hopefully how they'll look when this patch goes live. Of course, with this being the PTR, everything is still subject to change, but I think we're getting closer and closer to a finished product. I doubt too much will change from this point on, but I guess you never know for sure. What do you think about horrific visions from what you've seen so far? How do you feel about only getting to run these visions twice or maybe three times per week? Should it be more? Maybe significantly more? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all our supporters over on Patreon. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.